Hello and welcome back. This is Candace from Candoodle and today I have a fun Halloween themed card but I'll be showing a technique for how to create a shaker card out of any stamped image. So let's get started. So I'm going to start off with my stamping and I'm using the Witch's Lair stamp set from Possum Stamps which is super cute. I'm going to use the witch image as well as the little cauldron and I'm going to do some very lazy masking. So I'm kind of mapping out where I want them to go and I want the cauldron to be nice and close to her so it looks like she is putting things in the cauldron. So I'm going to stamp that cauldron first because it's going to be in my foreground and then I'm going to stamp the witch on top of that. I created half of a mask for my cauldron and then I'm stamping the witch down on some tracing paper to see where that broom is going to go because I don't want her to hold the broom. So then I'm just kind of slipping my post-it notes underneath the tracing paper so I know they're in the right spot but I don't have to create a proper mask uh, to cover the broom. So then I'm going to stamp that down and now instead of holding the broom she can be holding something else that she looks like she's kind of throwing into the cauldron. So I came in with the Witch's Lair add-on set which has a really cute little crystal that I wanted her to be throwing in the cauldron because I'm going to turn this into a shaker card and have it filled with other little like rhinestones and crystals so I thought that would be really cute. So I am going to color my image with some Copics and I just kept the coloring pretty simple today. I wanted to do some fun sort of Halloween colors so for me I don't know why I always think of like black, purple, orange, and green so that was kind of my color scheme I was going for for this card. For this one, I colored everything in my lightest color and then I come in with my darkest in the really shaded areas and then kind of blend back out to lightest. I find that I get less heavy handed this way because I have a tendency to not leave a whole lot of white space, which is something that I'm working on. But as always with coloring, as long as you're having fun, that's all that counts. There are a million different ways to color and no way is right or wrong and there are so many different mediums. So just make sure that you're having fun with it because that's what counts. I also really like the size of this image because it's not super teeny tiny so it gives you kind of enough room to bring in different colors and shading but not it's not so big that you're like overwhelmed with what to do with the space if that makes sense. I just find that these images are a very nice sweet spot and they are enough to fill up a card but not too much that you have to kind of build a scene but you can if you want to. Um, so I wanted this card to be super clean and simple and to have my focus on the shaker which we're going to make afterwards. Um, so I thought that this was kind of a nice size and I did end up cutting it down to be a little bit smaller um, of a card. It was like around three and a quarter by like four and a half or something like that. Um, so I just I have a tendency to cut my cards into whatever size I feel that will look good um, and then I kind of make an envelope or find one that will fit it appropriately. So you'll have noticed that I didn't color in my cauldron and that's because this is going to form our shaker well. So I'm just coming in with an X-Acto knife and my cutting pad and very slowly going around to cut out the inside of that cauldron. You can also definitely fussy cut this out if you're more comfortable that way. I just find I have a tendency to crinkle my paper if I do that. And make sure to save the inside of your stamped image because I'm going to show you a trick for how to use that later. So to make this look a little bit more finished and complete, I'm just coming in with a water-based black marker and filling in the sides. It just makes it look more finished, I find. So then I have my card base and I cut a piece of fun foam to go behind my card front. And now I'm going to take that piece of cauldron, which is my stamped image, and put that on the fun foam and trace around it. This just makes it so I don't have to trace on top of my card front and risk getting pen or pencil on it. And then I cut that out of my fun foam and making sure it fits nice. And then I'm going to do the same thing on my card base. I'm going to put in that piece of cauldron like a little puzzle and trace around it so I know where the inside of my cauldron is going to be so I know where I have to color. So this took several turns. I was originally going to color it to have like different levels so it looked like a bubbly sort of concoction but then I really didn't like the way that it was going. So I kind of blended out those darker lines which is the beauty of Copics. If you don't like it you can kind of just keep going over it and moving things around. And then instead I came in and made some kind of bubbly blobs with my darker Copics and with some of the lighter ones in my colorless blender to just kind of make it look like a bubbly sort of potion. And then once I was finally happy with it and I put my card back over it and was happy, I realized that a lot of this wasn't going to show because my shaker bits are going to cover most of it. But at least a lesson was learned along the way, so hopefully you can take some inspiration from that. So then I'm coming in with a small piece of acetate and I'm going to double-sided tape that down to the front of my card. That way it is going to form a nice. So before I assemble the card, I am going to stamp down my sentiment on the front. So I came in with one from the Witch's Lair add-on stamp set that says, Have a Wicked Birthday. 
I have a lot of friends who really love Halloween and witches and all things spooky, so I thought this would give it some more versatility that I can use it beyond Halloween. And I'm going to come in with um, some double-sided tape and I am going to adhere that to the front and the back of my fun foam, which is quite thick because I did add an additional layer of fun foam. I'm going to line that up on my card base and make sure it is nice and centered. And then I am going to come in with this super cute sequin and polymer clay mix called Spooktacular Bats from Possum Stamps. And it is so, so cute. It has bats and little rhinestones and stars in purple and orange. It's really, really cute. So I took some of the bats out just so the black wouldn't overpower things. And then I'm going to peel up my double-sided tape and adhere the front of my card down. That part in between the cauldron and the sentiment looked a little bit naked and I didn't want to risk stamping some of the little bubbles from the stamp set. So instead I came in with a pencil and really lightly put some circles, which you can see me erasing on camera just so the pencil doesn't show through. And I go over it with my lightest color of Copic and then I just add a little bit of dark to the bottom right edge just to kind of make it look like bubbles are kind of floating out of the cauldron. Ended up really liking the way that this turned out looking, so I'm glad that I did it, although it was a little scary experimenting with Copics uh, when my card was already that close to completion. And for the final step, of course, I'm going to come in with my white jelly roll to add some highlights, and then that is the final card. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video, and this gives you some inspiration for how to create a shaker card out of your stamped images in a bit more of a creative way. If you have little ones trick-or-treating or celebrate Halloween, I hope you have a lovely day. As always, I appreciate the time that you spend here with me. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in another video. Bye!